Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And a beautiful morning it is, is it not? This is a perfect day for an installation. Now, I know it looks like there's not a lot of people here, but this place is going to be packed to the rafters in just a very short time. Who's speaking to you this morning? I'm Warner Saunders of NBC5 Chicago. <laughs> the news is all good today. There is no bad news. And um, I would like to have everybody welcome Dr. Elaine Maimon as the fifth president of uh, Governor State University. <laughs> Welcome to Greater Chicago, Dr. Maimon. I know you come from other places that, we're, that uh, other people don't know about, but we're going to learn a lot more about you today. I was born and raised in Chicago, and with the exception of going away to college and uh, to answer the call of the United States Army, I have been here to witness and to participate in the good and the bad and the ugly. In 1969, when GSU was emerging from the educational womb, Chicago was still reeling from the murders of RFK and, G and MLK. And I think if you were around at that time, you will remember, of course, the Democratic National Convention just a year before. In 1969, Two Black Panther leaders were killed, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark, in their beds on the west side of Chicago. The famous Chicago Seven dominated the news at that time, the days of rage. There were hippies and yippies. There were no buppies or yuppies. <laughs> Chicago was locked in a conflict of values with the establishment. Whole neighborhoods were hotbeds of racial tension and conflict. The governor of the state even threatened to sue the city of Chicago in an effort to break the long-standing pattern of persistent segregation. The Shackman Decree was, was enacted to prevent city jobs to be the complete province of those who were only the politically connected. In 1969, Dr. Maimon, the Women's Liberation Union was formed to fight against male domination in all areas of the marketplace. In 38 years, much has been accomplished for this area. Much good has been done. But the bad and the ugly are still lurking in the wings. So I welcome you, Dr. Maimon, to Chicago, to greater Chicago. We are in desperate need of fresh eyes with visions beyond self-interest self-satisfaction, self-aggrandizement. And although this is a community of millions of people, we can still make room for another hero, and we hope that will be you. I am honored to have been asked to participate today, and in keeping with the very long-standing academic traditions, we will now be joined by delegates from universities across America and other countries, delegates from learned societies, faculty, of Governor State, legislators, elected officials, and honored guests, and dignitaries from the region. David Barr, 1701 Yield University, Dr. William Wilkinson, 1746 Princeton University, Jerry D. Blakemore, 1846 St. Xavier University, Dr. Pamela Castellanos, 1848 University of Wisconsin-Madison, Dr. Sandra Mayfield, 1851 Northwestern University, John Berghoff, 1851 Lazelle College, Joyce Phillips, 1852 University of Dubuque, Bonnie Lund, 1853 Washington University, James Adams, 1855 Pennsylvania State University, Dr. Nancy Dunbar, 1857 Seton Hall University, Dr. Sherilyn Poole, 1870 Wellesley University, Elizabeth Richter, 1870 Wellesley University, Frank Burroughs, 1873 Texas Christian University, Dr. Carrie Morris, 
1878, Duquesne University, Anthony Carfang. 1885, Arizona State University, Dr. Nancy Haas. 1885, University of Arizona, Terry Mazzani. 1890, Columbia College, Chicago, Dr. Deborah Holstein. 1890, University of Chicago, Dr. Jeffrey Slovak. 1890, Washington State University, Dr. Leo Bustad. 1891, North Park University, Dr. Peter Rogers. 1891, Stanford University, Dr. David Curtis. 1898, DePaul University, Dr. Raffaello Weffer. 1899, John Marshall Law School, Andre Ashmore. 1899, Northern Illinois University, Dr. John Peters. 1901, Joliet Junior College, Dr. Gina Prohl. 1902, Western Illinois University, Dr. Daniel Hendricks. 1910, Radford University, Carolyn Merritt. 1910, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico, Dr. Fausto Vallado. 1911, Malcolm X College, Zary Campbell. 1933, Wayne State University, Yolanda Butler. 1935, Kennedy King College, Clyde K. Alamine. 1937, Siena College, Robert Milheiser. 1947, University of North Carolina at Wilmington, Dr. Manuel Avalos, 1954, University of Alaska Anchorage, Dr. Jan L. Gaylor, 1957, Prairie State College, Dr. Paul McCarthy, 1957, Stony Brook University, Yvette St. Jacques, 1966, Kankakee Community College, Dr. Jerry Weber, 1967, College of DuPage, Dr. Christopher Picard, 1967, Moraine Valley Community College, Terry Chambers, 1970, Olive Harvey College, Dr. Valerie Roberson, 1973, Sherman College of Straight Chiropractic, Dr. Sam Wang, and 2002, Nevada State College, Dr. Leslie DeMar. Welcome, one and all. Now, please welcome the faculty, staff, and students of Governor State University led by our Grand Marshal and Mace Bearer, Paul Blobaum, President of the Faculty Senate. Processing from the back right, the faculty and staff of the University College, led by Eric Wignall. Processing from the back left, the faculty and staff of University Library, led by Beth Hanson Shaw. Processing from the back right, the University Administrative Staff, led by Gail Bradshaw. Processing from the back left, welcome our students, representatives of student clubs and organizations. The group is led by our student senator, Larry Bledsoe. Processing from the back right, the faculty and staff of the College of Business and Public Administration in Arts and Sciences, led by Dr. Susan Gaffney. Processing from the back left, the faculty and staff of the College of Health Professionals, led by James Golding. Processing from the back right, the College of Arts and Sciences, led by Dr. Timothy Gazelle.
processing from the back left, the faculty and staff of the College of Education, led by Dr. Cyrus Ellis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the center stage, please join me in welcoming our platform party. The party is led by Illinois Deputy Governor Victor Robeson, who is representing Governor Rob Blagojevich. Carol Geary Schneider, President, Association of American Colleges and Universities. Gebi Yehu Ijigu, GSU Executive Vice President, Chief of Staff and Treasurer. Diane Kaplan, President Rasmussen Foundation of Alaska. Constantine Kuras, President, American Association of State Colleges and Universities. Carrie Heitman, Chair, Illinois Board of Higher Education. Peggy Woodward, GSU Interim Provost, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Lisa Dugan, Illinois State Representative, 79th District. Edward Mahoney, Illinois State Senator, 18th District. Renee Cosell, Illinois State Representative, 81st District. Maddie Hunter, Illinois State Senator, 3rd District. Kenneth Duncan, Illinois State Representative, 5th District. Larry Walsh, Will County Executive. Al Riley, Illinois State Representative, 38th District. Al McGowan, Mayor, University Park. Kathy Miller, President, GSU Civil Service Senate. John Ostenberg, Mayor, Village of Park Forest. Rosa Morgan, President, GSU Student Senate. Irene Brody, Mayor, Village of Robbins. Chang Hayim, aide to Jesse Jackson, Jr., United States Congressman. Richard Reinbold, Mayor, Village of Richton Park. Cambium E. Buckner, aide to United States Senator Richard J. Durbin. Robert Donaldson, Mayor, Village of Hazelcrest. Donna Burns Phillips, Director, Office of Women in Higher Education, American Council on Education. William Sanders, Chair, GSU Foundation Board. Karen Reed, President, the Center for Performing Arts Board of Directors. Edward S. Ogata, Chief Medical Officer, Children's Memorial Hospital. Von Dean Davis, Superintendent, Matson School District. Gerald McGilvin, Chair, GSU Alumni Board. Addison Woodward, GSU Professor Emeritus and Member, Illinois Board of Higher Education. John Stoll, GSU Dean, University College. Diane Dates Casey, GSU Dean, University Library. Alexis Kennedy, GSU General Counsel and Vice President. Joseph Addison, GSU Interim Associate Provost for Academic Personnel. Eric Martin, GSU Dean, College of Arts and Sciences and Interim Dean, College of Education. Linda Sampson, GSU Dean, College of Health Professions. William Nolan, GSU Interim Vice President for Institutional Advancement and Dean, College of Business and Public Administration. Elizabeth Green, GSU Student Trustee. Kathleen Field Orr, GSU Board Member. Louis Manilo, Arts Patron and Philanthropist. Louis Mayor, GSU Trustee. Debbie Halverson, Illinois Senate Majority Leader. Christy De Laurentiis, Secretary, GSU Board of Trustees. Stuart Fagan, GSU President Emeritus. Bruce Fryfield, GSU Trustee. Jack Lepre, Vice Chair, GSU Board of Trustees. Lorena Samuels, Chair, GSU Board of Trustees. And Elaine P. Maimon, President, Governor's State University. Ladies and gentlemen, your platform party. We would like to acknowledge others in our audience today. They are local leaders, officials, including township supervisors, village trustees, school board presidents, school board members, park district presidents, park district members, community college board presidents, and others. I would also like to recognize the honorary planning committee listed on page on the page in your booklet. If you are a member of any of these groups, please rise as a group to be recognized. Please rise. Thank you for joining us this morning.
The presentation of the May signifies the official beginning of this ceremony. Now please welcome our color guard representing the Girl Scouts of South Cook County. Audience, please rise. Color guard attention. Color guard advance. Color guards post color. Thank you very much, and please welcome the Crete Monet High School Show Choir as they present our national anthem. Dismiss. The platform party may be seated, please. Let us show our appreciation for our Girl Scout Color Guard and the wonderful young people from Crete Monet High School. And to the Rich Central and Prairie State Combined Orchestras as well. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to the business at hand. It is now my honor to introduce a good friend of the university, someone who is becoming a friend of yours, uh, Dr. Maimon, Senator Debbie Halverson, Majority Leader of the Illinois State Senate. From the beginning of her career in public service, Senator Halverson has uh, been an advocate of education. She, has, she is a graduate of GSU. She earned her bachelor's and her master's degree here. She is currently an adjunct professor at GSU teaching a course in public policy. Her students give her the highest marks for knowledge of her subject, which is no surprise because she is the second highest ranking member of the state senate here in Illinois. Her students also commend her for her preparedness, her access, and having an open mind on every issue. We would only hope that the entire senate would be that way. Had to get that dig in. Because I ride the CTA. Her, her colleagues in the Senate 
even on the other side of the aisle, say the same. In fact, we have been told that her nickname is VOR. Ready for this one? Voice of reason. <laughs> Senator Halverson. Thank you. I would hope you would please sit down, otherwise this is going to be an awfully long uh, day. Thank you so much, Mr. Sanders. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Delegates, distinguished guests, students, trustees, faculty of Governor State University, and friends of GSU. Dr. Maimon, I am honored to represent the legislature and the state in welcoming you to Illinois and to my alma mater. Congratulations on your appointment as Governor State's fifth president. As you come to know us better, you will learn that Illinois represents the best of the Midwest and the best of America. We are warm, open, and hospitable. We have little patience for pretensions and absolutely no patience for phonies of any kind. You will feel right at home here in Illinois. You will also discover that Illinois has made a sincere and significant commitment to education. Historically, our public universities have been committed to access and academic excellence, to innovation in the classroom, as well as service to our community. By every measure, we have excelled. No university demonstrates excellence better than Governor State University. GSU is affordable, accessible, and it certainly celebrates diversity. Also emphasizes service. And as an adjunct professor myself here at GSU, teaching a course in public policy, I know firsthand the university's commitment to the highest standards of academic quality. Dr. Maimon, given your history as a teacher, a scholar, and administrator, I know you have much to bring to the table here at GSU and higher education will move forward to build on our achievements. In the interest of full disclosure, I should tell you that I got to know Dr. Maimon this summer when the legislature was finalizing this year's budget so we thought, <laughs> for higher education. She's a quick study. Maybe she should be a senator or a representative. She had her facts down cold. And even though she is a professor of English, she was compelling in the arguments she made for funding for new science labs here at GSU. And also, I dream about E's and F's almost every night because of the ENF wing that she keeps advocating for. She will be a wonderful advocate for GSU and higher education in the years to come. So here's what I ask of you, Dr. Maimon. Challenge our assumptions, question our practices, share your experiences and ideas. Shake us up, Elaine. It's the 21st century, and Illinois cannot stand pat, or we will never be satisfied with mediocrity. We look forward to the leadership you will provide GSU and the contributions that I know you will make to higher education in the state. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Halverson. And now it is my privilege to introduce another very good friend of GSU, Al McCowan. He is the mayor of University Park. Al? Good morning, all, and welcome. Delegates, distinguished guests, legislators, public officials, students, faculty, staff of Governor State, friends of GSU, family and friends of Dr. Maimon, President Maimon. Welcome everyone to University Park. We're proud that our community is home to a university on the path of leadership and greatness, that we're home to the Center for Performing Arts, 
which US, GSU supports and which enriches the cultural life of University Park and the Chicago South Suburbs, and home to the Nathan Manilow Sculpture Park, located on GSU's beautiful campus, an integral part of the university, which brings international attention to our community. Over the years, our village and our university, we think of GSU as our university, have grown together, just as the visionaries who helped create the university and the village had intended. As the university has increased enrollment, added new academic programs, and expanded its outreach to community, University Park has increased its population, attracted new investment, and added amenities that improve the quality of life for all. We have helped each other grow, and we will continue to help each other grow. It's been a wonderful partnership, but now it's something more. University Park and Governor State have become friends. We have become a model for what the relationship between a university and the community should be. Dr. Maimon, as a friend, I welcome you to our university and to University Park. After having a chance to visit with you, I know that you will bring us energy, enthusiasm, and ideas. It's clear to me we're on the same page when it comes to our shared vision for the university and the village. In the years to come, I look forward to working with you in accomplishing many great things for the benefit of our village, our region, and our university. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We all know that a university is defined by the character and the quality of its faculty, its staff, and of course, its students. By those measures, Governor State is a distinguished university. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to present the presidents of the faculty, civil service, and student senates. First, it is my honor to introduce Paul Blobaum, president of the GSU Faculty Senate. Paul. Thank you. I'm very pleased to join my voice with those of so many others today to welcome all of you, and especially our honored guests, to this installation of Dr. Elaine Maiman as our fifth president of Governor State University. One year ago, I was very honored to have been chosen to serve on the Presidential Search Committee which was a subcommittee of the Board of Trustees. This committee, which brought over 20 people together under the leadership of Jack Bupre, Bupre and Lorene Samuels, was extremely dedicated and we worked very hard. Today, I believe the Board of Trustees has made an outstanding choice. Dr. Maiman, we are so very pleased and we are so very honored that you have chosen us as well. We also appreciate your very excellent choice of Dr. Gebeyehu Ejigu as our Executive Vice President. And now today, we celebrate that you are now one of us, a valued member of our academic community. In this community, it isn't just one person who holds up the mace. We all raise up this mace. You and I, faculty, staff, and students, and the community. Each one of us has a God-given gift and abilities to contribute to this university and its, very, and its very important mission. All of our work is under this sign and no other. And we are very, very proud to be part of this community. Dr. Maiman, I wish for you today a very happy day for you and your family. And I look forward to working with you as well as the rest of the Faculty Senate in the work that is ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Now, I would like to present the president of the Civil Service Senate, Ms. Kathy Miller.
Thank you. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to Governor State University, Dr. Maimon. The Civil Service Senate looks forward to working with you to advance the university's mission in the months and the years to come. We appreciate your promise to make decisions at GSU that are open, transparent, and inclusive. Inclusive. You've used that word many times in meetings with staff, faculty, students, and others, and we appreciate the fact that you include us and that you invite us to sit at the table and let our voices be heard. I, along with Paul, was also a member of the search committee. And as you know, we brought in the best that this country has to offer. But Dr. Maimon, I must say, you were and are the best of the best. The civil service staff welcomes you to GSU. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. And now, uh, please welcome the elected representative of all of the students of Governor State University, Ms. Rosa Moran. Welcome to Governor State University. Dr. Maimon, on behalf of the students at GSU, I thank you for accepting the invitation to become the university's fifth president. Since you started on July 1st, you are realizing our hopes and fulfilling our dreams. The campus is becoming more friendly. You are listening to us. You are taking action. Communication is becoming more open. GSU's priorities are becoming more clearly focused on the needs of the students. We are off to a great start. Welcome, Dr. Maimon. The students of GSU look forward to working with you. Thank you, Ms. Moran. And thank you, Presidents all. You are wonderful representatives of GSU. We join you in welping, welcoming Dr. Maimon. Like you, we look forward to the impact that she is surely going to have, not only at Governor State, but in higher education throughout all of Illinois. I get the sense of what to expect. If you want to get a little bit of the sense of what to expect, I'd like to introduce Dr. Carol Geary Schneider, president of the Association of American Colleges and Universities, who is familiar with the contributions of Dr. Maimon and, had, and all of the contributions that she's made in higher education. Ms. Schneider. Good morning, members of the Governor's State University community, distinguished guests, and Dr. Maimon. It's a huge privilege to speak today on behalf of the entire higher education community. We congratulate Governor's State University on an inspired choice of Elaine Maimon as your new president. But it's also a personal pleasure for me to join in this celebration because Elaine has been both a good friend and a wonderful colleague and mentor to me over more than 20 years. The friendship we share is grounded in a commitment we both hold to the lives, to the hopes, and also to the needs of first-generation college students, the very students who are central to the particular mission of this university. Both of us were privileged to receive the very best education that American society offers its young. And both of us have shared ever since a strong interest in discovering ways to extend the benefits of a truly great education to the ever larger numbers of students in higher education and, of course, on this campus. Now, this commitment led Elaine Maimon at a very young age to become what we call one of the founding mothers of the writing across the curriculum movement, one of the most influential movements that has touched American higher education in the last two decades. By the early 1980s, when she and I first met, she was already nationally known for her success in teaching novice students to become capable writers and in beginning to change the way faculty members themselves approach their work in the writing intensive course and classroom. That leadership and her, her fame is what led me to reach out to her, and I was amazed by the generosity and the enthusiasm with which she responded. From her position at the time, she was then at what is now called Arcadia University, and then she moved on to Brown University, and from my own role at the University of Chicago, we worked together with others to involve literally thousands of young faculty across many disciplines and institutions 
in discovering ways to offer the best possible education to our diverse students. Now, it was clear even then that Elaine Maiman possessed all the qualities of a great university leader, a strong sense of mission and purpose, the ability, as you've already heard, to listen and to learn from the wealth of perspectives different from her own. She had keen political savvy and the drive and skill to turn a collaboratively shared vision into plans, effective action, and demonstrated results. Today, of course, she joins the Governor's State University as a tested and seasoned leader, one who has very successfully led two other public universities with missions similar to your own, Arizona State University West and the University of Alaska at Anchorage. In both these roles, she has faced all the complexities that every president confronts. The challenge of balancing a very long list of often conflicting interests, both on campus and in the relations of the university with its publics. She knows very well that she's taking on a challenging job as your president. But as all the greetings she's already received today make clear, she brings to those challenges the zest, the passion, the creativity, and yes, the budget-minded detail that have been her greatest assets throughout a distinguished career. But what I most want you to know today is that Elaine brings with her to this presidency the heart and soul of a great teacher. She will confront every issue before her with just one question in mind. How will her decisions and yours as a community affect the best educational interests of the students? As she takes the helm, I wish for her and the Governor's State University community every possible educational success. But more than that, I express to you my confidence that you have chosen the best possible leader for this vibrant and growing institution. Elaine, I offer you my warmest congratulations. And you, of course, know that the Association of American Colleges and Universities, which I lead, will be a constant resource for you and your colleagues as you chart together an ambitious and a visionary course for this university. Dr. Schneider, thank you for those kind words. It seems that uh, predicting the contributions that Dr. Maiman will make to higher education here in Illinois is kind of like trying to catch lightning in a bottle. Perhaps a friend and a colleague of Dr. Maiman's, Diane Kaplan, president of the Rasmussen Foundation, who worked closely with her in Alaska, can enlighten us with a little bit more insight into this new lady on campus. Thank you. Several mornings ago, I awoke with a start. I said to myself simply, oi. In just a few days, I'm addressing a crowd in University Park, Illinois. I come from a place, the 49th state, the land of the bright midnight sun, with snowy top mountains and big polar bears where salmon and halibut run. Let me tell you a little of why Elaine's special. Please indulge me a moment, at least. Her beginnings were humble, I thought you should know, from the city called Philly back east. The place that makes cheesesteaks, the place that makes scrapple, and home to the Liberty Bell, the place of Ben Franklin, the home of the Phillies, a place that I know very well. There she learned all her loving and loved all her learning. She was white-eyed and bright as a star. She knew education would be her vocation, and everyone knew she'd go far. After a fashion, she developed a passion for researching, writing, and teaching. It took her to Penn, to Brown, and to Queens. She kept on with her learning and reaching. She polished her writing, but Mort was inviting. <laughs> there soon came a girl and a boy. Her children, they're here today, Alan and Jill, the family that brings her much joy. I'm not sure if you knew that it's at ASU she senses there's something she's needing. She wants more control. That would be her new role. She discovers her talent for leading. She loves every student and cheers everyone. She learns each department, each course. 
She immerses herself in the campus's life. She becomes a phenomenal force. A few years ago, the great land was blessed. She landed with Mort on a plane. A woman whose heart was as big as Alaska, our new UA Chancellor, Elaine. She landed so charmingly into our midst. She soared up to bald eagle heights. She charted a path so beautifully bright, it mirrored our famed northern lights. She touched all our lives, the young and the old, lived among us without any fuss. It didn't take me very long, not at all, to know she was soon one of us. She raised the school's profile, captured our city. She put out a call to the town. Oops, I knew that would happen. Come to the campus. We want you to know us. Just come here and wander around. She and Mort stayed. What a difference they made. They really sensed Anchorage was home. They loved all Alaska from Barrow to Fairbanks to Dillingham, Juneau, and Nome. But you came a-calling, and soon we'd hear bawling all over the 49th state. <laughs> Maimon is leaving, Alaskans were grieving. She's going to Governor's state. <laughs> we can't get much pleasure that you stole our treasure. <laughs> but Alaskans have generous souls. When one of our best is fulfilling a quest and meeting her personal goals, she was meant to be president, meant to be here. She was destined to be one of you. So I have a duty as a good Alaskan to give Illinois what it's due. <laughs> to Alaskans, it's better to give than receive, and that is what we'll therefore do. We give you our treasure, our own Dr. Maimon, to lead you to lead GSU. <laughs> Oh my, wasn't that terrific? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Thank you very much. Please stand again. I mean, you know, that's a wonderful tribute. It looks like now we're beginning to get a picture of who this Elaine Maimon is and what she's about. But we would all like something a little bit more complete here. So we ask a few people who love her and know her best to complete this portrait. Dr. Maimon, if I might direct your attention to the video wall. And as we say in television, roll the tape. I met Elaine Maimon over 40 years ago when we were both graduate students in English literature at the University of Pennsylvania and thus began a great and long-lasting friendship uh, when my mother died a few years ago and Elaine shared with me a wonderful essay that she'd written about her mother a woman who died when Elaine before Elaine graduated from high school and who has I think inspired so much of what Elaine has accomplished in her life. If I were to describe my mother in one word, it would be passionate. She is especially passionate about all of the places that she has been. She doesn't just inhabit them, she imagines them in very fruitful ways. In fact, I remember these family road trips that we would take when I was a kid, driving cross country, my mother reading Willa Cather out loud from the front seat. <laughs> it's a bit hard to take as an eight-year-old, but I must say I look back on it as a very pleasant memory. This is the beginning of something big. I've known Elaine Maiman for a long time, and I know that she has the gift. She is, in fact, herself a gift to higher education. She manages to combine a vision of what will be important in the future, a creativity about higher education with a sense always of the student. The student is first and foremost for Elaine, but the creative ways in which he manages uh, to develop education for the students are 
are unique and extraordinary. I want to let you know that you have been my inspiration because ever since at Oxford, England, in the um, dining hall of Balliol College, when you came up to me with the rest of UA delegation and said, Omer, I think you're going to be our first Rhodes Scholar from UAA. Um, something happened that night. I have, I have learned my calling in life and I'm going to be a public servant and you're the inspiration behind it and I thank you so much for allowing me to believe in myself. She loves teaching. She loves students. She loves to be a part of people finding their destiny through coming together as a community on a college campus. You're fortunate to have President Maimon with you because I know you'll find the same qualities as she joins your university. Well, on this particular trip, we were in Juneau and we heard that one of the uh, places not to be missed in Juneau was the Mendenhall Glacier. So we decided to climb the Mendenhall Glacier. We had two choices, one, the easy, shorter path, scenic nonetheless, uh, the second choice was much more arduous, even dangerous, because it was slippery. There was a three-to-one vote in the family that we should take the easy one because of practical considerations. Elaine stumped eloquently for the tough road. Uh, it's, it's an attitude that she has always had, that if something is worth doing, then let's do it and a vision, I might say, just like her, her gift for friendship, a vision that has rarely proved wrong. She is a teacher, she's a scholar, but she's also a learner. And I would respectfully suggest that Governor State University will be very well led into a new era of accomplishment by someone who is as selfless and as committed as she is to advancing the interests of your students and your faculty. Everything I've ever seen her do has been both creative and magnificent in its vision of a bolder approach to education. It's going to be a great run. All my best wishes and all my love, and I say to the people at GSU, how lucky you are. Congratulations, Mom. I'm really proud of you. And um, congratulations, Governor State. You got a good one. And my only piece of advice to you is fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> We're so proud of you. Over the years, you've taught me so much about the importance of hard work, perseverance, and keeping a sense of humor. Your accomplishments in the workplace are equaled by your accomplishments as a mom. Now that I have kids of my own, it's great to see your influence touching another generation. Grandma, you're an inspiration to little girls everywhere. Congratulations! <laughs> okay, Annabelle. Yeah, that one was really good. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was good. That. <laughs> oh, that is great. Um, Dr. Maiman, I, I uh, I'd like to take the liberty of just saying that I have one other piece of advice to you. Coming in here to Chicago, there are two baseball teams. <laughs> and you have got to choose between one or the other. There is no middle ground here. No, no, this, this is it. it. Inclusiveness ends at this point. <laughs> now, I am going to strongly suggest that you pick the White Sox. There will be nefarious agents out there, and it'll start slowly. You will get invited to go to Wrigley Field. And the next thing you know, you will be wearing a Cubs jersey. And then you will be invited to sing the seventh inning thing. Now you will then be courted by them, and you will somehow reveal, I am a Cubs fan again. I dare say, that will be the beginning of your demise. <laughs> so just remember this, and repeat after me, I am a White Sox fan. <laughs> there is no doubt that Governor State has, 
has certainly chosen well this time. And here is the moment we've all been waiting for. It is my honor to present the chair of the Board of Trustees, Lorene Samuels, to invest Dr. Maimon as the fifth president of Governor State University. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Delegates, distinguished guests, students, trustees, and faculty of Governor State University and friends of GSU. I think you know now why we have or have a good idea of why we asked Dr. Maimon to succeed Dr. Stuart Fagan as the fifth president of Governor State University. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to thank and commend Dr. Fagan for his service and his contributions to GSU. Dr. Fagan. <laughs> Dr. Fagan, from here on out, we'll measure our progress by the standards you set. Standards for fiscal responsibility, academic excellence, and service to the community. Dr. Fagan, would you please stand and be recognized? We would also like to acknowledge the work of our fellow trustee, Jack Beaupre, for serving as chair of the search committee and heading the national search that ultimately brought Dr. Maimon to GSU. Jack, you, you and the committee couldn't have made a better recommendation. Our thanks to you and all the members of the committee. Trustee Beaupre, would you please stand and be recognized. Selecting a president is one of the most important decisions a board of trustees is asked to make. When we began this search, we wanted someone who was a strategic thinker, an individual who knew how to set priorities, a person who could find ways to match the programs of the university with the needs of the region, and a person who knows how to develop new programs relevant to the needs of the region. We wanted someone who knows how to connect and how to partner, connecting and partnering with our community colleges, indeed doing so at all levels of the educational spectrum, preschool to graduate school. And to be frank, in this period of uncertain state support for public universities, we wanted someone who knew how to balance a budget, develop new sources of funding, and rally the community to support a common cause. We had one more requirement, the most important one of all. We wanted someone who shared our vision of GSU, who was enthusiastic about learning, leading a university of social justice who had a passion for creating a university that was accessible to all, the American University of the 21st century. In other words, someone with all the basic skills who could dream with us. And as my favorite poet Langston Hughes said, and I'm adding an extra word or two, and I really don't think he would mind, <laughs> Elaine and all you who are dreamers too. Help me to make our world anew. I reach out my hands to you. Governor State and the region are reaching out, Dr. Maimon. Please come forward so that I may invest you as the fifth president of this wonderful university.
Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen. What they Would my fellow trustees please join me in this investiture ceremony? Ladies and gentlemen, the fifth president of Governor State University, Dr. Elaine Mayman. Thank you. Thank you, Loreen, trustees, ladies and gentlemen. I must say that some people talk about a drowning person seeing one's life flash before the eyes. Well, I've had the wonderful privilege today of seeing my life flash before my eyes, and I'm not drowning. I can enjoy it. This is just a very, very moving event. Delegates, distinguished guests, students, trustees, alumni, faculty, staff, and friends of Governor's State, I am proud to stand before you as the fifth president of Governor's State University. We come together to celebrate successes of almost 40 years of pragmatic idealism and to envision the exceptional promise of the future. I want to take a moment to thank the multitude of volunteers. You saw the Ask Me buttons everywhere. Uh, these are people who worked not only on this ceremony but on this full week of academic activities. Would you join me in thanking them? And Warner, where is Warner? I want to thank Warner Sanders, uh, but I also want to say, Warner Saunders, that uh, among those volunteers are Sox fans <laughs> and Cubs fans. <laughs> and to be an inclusive president, I think I may have to uh, just root for Chicago. <laughs> Now, one person has specifically asked me not to single him out, but I'm going to do it anyway. I want to give particular recognition to the chair of the installation committee. In the true GSU spirit, he has motivated many people to work as one. Would you please join me in recognizing Acting Vice President and Dean William Nallen. And on a personal note, I'm deeply grateful to share this moment with my husband and life partner, Dr. Mort Maiman. And I have no idea how that video got done. I don't know where everyone was and how they, I'm going to have to find out about it later. I, I'm just absolutely stunned. Our daughter Jillian, an elementary school teacher in Philadelphia, comes here without missing any class time. <laughs> and our son Alan, a special projects reporter on the Las Vegas Review Journal, has brought his journalistic eye to Illinois. So all our elected officials, watch out. <laughs> 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 
and he's not distracted by our three grandchildren, Deja, Madison, and Annabelle Elaine. <laughs> I want to thank Alan and Angie for bringing these darling three sisters to participate today. And it looks as if Annabelle Elaine has excused herself for a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, we will catch up with her later. Special thanks to friends and colleagues, oh my, who have traveled from across this glorious nation, Alaska, Arizona, California, Indiana, Nevada, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Washington, D.C. They've all converged here today at GSU. Thank you for being here. The pageant of universities is inspiring, and I thank everyone who was a delegate and who marched in that pageant. GSU takes its place among the world's most respected educational institutions. This procession connects GSU to the tradition of veritas, the search for truth, freely engaged in without fear or prejudice. The procession also connects the elements of my personal career begun in private higher education, Haverford College, and there's somebody here from each one of these places. It's just amazing to me. Haverford College, Arcadia University, Brown University, and then the public institutions, Queens College, Arizona State University, University of Alaska Anchorage, and now Governor's State University. From the East Coast to the Southwest, from Alaska, the great land to Illinois in the heartland. Chicagoland, I love that name. It conveys a special shared sense of civic pride. Connected by rail lines and commercial networks, the entire region shares the Chicago spirit, Sox and Cubs. Chicagoland is home territory to the phoenix, that magic bird consumed by fire and then reborn from its own ashes. GSU's student newspaper is called the phoenix. On campus, we enjoy Edwin Strautmanis' sculpture entitled Phoenix. And as the brochure says, this wonderful work of art, framing the sun, which like its namesake, dies in its flames only to reemerge. After the great fire of 1871, Chicago emerged from the ashes to lead the country in commerce, manufacturing, and architecture. The city skyline was reborn with the first skyscrapers. Just so, GSU's history of service to returning adult students celebrates the Phoenix because our students exemplify renewal and reinvention of self. Renewal and reinvention. That's what education should always be about. That's what the 21st century must be about. The purpose of an installation is to remember the past, reflect on the present, and imagine the future. As T.S. Eliot writes in the Four Quartets, time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future. Now I'm an English professor, so you're gonna get used to these quotations. There are more, so just relax and enjoy them. <laughs> Let us look at GSU's origins and ideals. Let us ask where we have succeeded and where we have gone astray. Let us examine what should be sustained 
and what should be transformed. Then, Phoenix-like, we will renew and reinvent GSU. First, let us remember. Remembering is itself an act of imagination. We select and reconstruct the past into stories that inspire the future. Anthropologist Del Heim says, a community is defined as a group of people who know the same stories. And I would add, therefore share the same past. Although Governor's State was not founded until 1969, our university is rooted in the post-World War II era. In the late 1940s, thousands of servicemen and women returned home to Illinois to the rapidly expanding Chicago metropolitan area. After defeating tyranny, these veterans, regardless of socioeconomic group, yearned for the American dream, the pursuit of happiness, and they got the chance. The GI Bill of Rights, the 20th century's most significant public policy initiative, opened doors to higher education just as the Morrill Act, the Land-Grant College Act, enacted in 1862 and signed by Illinois' own Abraham Lincoln, had vastly increased opportunities in the preceding century. After World War II, GIs who had shipped out from farms and factories returned to unprecedented opportunities for upward mobility. The dream of university education and a home of their own was within reach. Here, on this very spot, amid the cornfields and lakes of the Illinois heartland, Nathan Manilow, a builder in every sense of the word, imagined a new town, one that would be free of the covenants that restricted other Chicago area neighborhoods only to the right people. This new town would be characterized by diversity and affordability. It would include a forest preserve, a new commuter terminal, and a great university. And here we are today in University Park, surrounded by a forest preserve at the terminus of the Metro Line that runs directly from Michigan Avenue and Millennium Park. Starting in 1969, we have collectively been building a great university imagined as the People's University. Reconciling greatness, high standards, with openness has been the major challenge for GSU and I will say for American higher education as a whole. Nathan Manilow's son, Lewis, continued his father's dream, combining it with his own vision of infusing daily life with art. Lewis Manilow, builder, philanthropist, art collector, and GSU honorary degree recipient is with us today. Please join me in recognizing Lou Manilow and his father, the family of builders. town of University Park is distinctive because Governor's State, its great people's university, arises from a foundation of artistic expression, imagination set free. Mark de Suvero's Yes for Lady Day was constructed here before ground was broken for the university. Art, sculpture at GSU is not an afterthought. Art is essential to the identity of this campus. Public art belongs at all universities because artists teach us to look at the ordinary with new eyes. Now, you may like or loathe Paul. 
those who are new to our campus may have seen uh, the monumental statue of a slumped Paul Bunyan as you drove in. People who live here have very strong opinions one way or another about Paul. But one thing that's for sure is that here at the university, we can talk about Paul in terms of mythos, advertising, and new artistic materials. Just as art helps us to see life anew, one benefit of new presidential leadership is to look at the university with a newcomer's eye, an artist's eye to see the university's past, present, and future anew. And let me talk a little bit about the history of GSU. And I've, uh, I love history. I'm a student of history as well as of literature. So it's been a real privilege to learn about the history of this great institution. The presidential administration of William E. Engridson, 1969 to 76, established founding concepts of Governor State University. July 1969, the month of the first moon landing, was also the month that Governor Richard Ogilvie signed the statute establishing GSU. The GSU logo symbolizes flight to the moon and metaphorically to new heights of achievement and upward mobility. The three sides of the triangular shape and it's not so much a triangle in the way I look at it, but a wing, represent the tripartite role of faculty, teaching, scholarship, and service. GSU's colors, black and white, affirm that GSU was imagined as an oasis, transcending the turmoil of the late 60s and uniting people across racial lines. I'm grateful to Warner for that history lesson. When, when we met with Warner in his NBC studios last week, he remembers this concept of GSU as an oasis and made sure that I understood it too and understood our colors and what they represent. Dr. Engridson, the university's first builder, established GSU as a non-traditional experimenting university with a mission to serve adult learners and community college transfer students. GSU was founded on the principle of partnership with community colleges. And in that spirit, I'd like to ask our partners, the, the presidents and representatives from Illinois community colleges to rise and be recognized. Thank you for being here today. Dr. Engridson worked with Louis Manilow to make GSU a gathering place for sculptors from Chicagoland and beyond. In 1976, GSU hosted a monumental sculpture exhibition entitled The Sculptor, The Campus, and The Prairie. Peter Sheldahl, still an art critic for The New Yorker, I just saw an article of his two weeks ago, wrote about this exhibit in 1976, and here's what he said. The train ride south from the loop to University Park gets dramatic toward the end of the line. Dense habitation ceases abruptly, and the almighty American prairie always underfoot in Chicago, but usually out of mind, emerges like a conquering god. Sheldahl intuitively understood something essential about Governor State's unique integration of art, education, and nature. Works of sculpture in the exhibition were created from materials of industrial society. President Egbertson said that these works expressed a thoroughly contemporary, exuberant, indomitable, even defiant human spirit. That defiant human spirit civilizes the prairie and simultaneously finds beauty in industrial materials usually associated with machines. Governor State University, the site of this encounter, 
becomes sacred ground where nature and civilization meet. The integration of public art with the university symbolically defines what I call the university as public square. And what that means is that the university is a place inspiring engagement with the aspirational values of our diverse cultures, a place where the city and nature meet, a place where education is a lifelong process in a publicly shared environment. Now, examine the architecture and setting of many universities here in, and in Europe. These institutions look like Gothic cathedrals or monasteries, and they're usually built on hills. The idea was to create an isolated environment apart from and above society for the purpose of preparing a ruling class. Realize now that in a democratic society, we are all members of the ruling class. Here, universities cannot be gated communities for the elite. They must be public squares, inviting talented individuals, regardless of socioeconomics or family heritage, to discover new ideas. In ancient Greece, the public square was called the Agora, where Socrates walked with students and taught them to be leaders in the city. The Romans' public square was the Forum, where Cicero inspired young Romans to understand responsibilities of citizenship. Governor's state, from its beginning, has reconciled nature, the prairie god, with the values of civilization, art, and education, creating a public square, inviting people from all classes of society to participate in responsible public life. The second president of GSU, Dr. Leo Goodman Malamuth, and he served from 76 to 92, strengthened GSU's role as a public square. Wisely, he reflected on the excesses of the late 60s, shall we say, while sustaining the spirit of thoughtful imagination. He recognized that classes without walls may be a good metaphor. But in actuality, students need more structure and better acoustics, I should add, to hear themselves think and to learn. Dr. Goodman Malamuth harnessed the prairie god's potential by imposing necessary constraints and developing sound educational practices. Paula Wolf assumed the presidency of GSU in July 1992 and served until 2000. President Wolf, a true pragmatic idealist furthered and refined GSU's distinctive mission as a university dedicated to social justice. Dr. Stuart Fagan, president from 2000 to 2007, contributed greatly to building a 21st century university. Dr. Fagan's legacy includes protecting the natural environment, expanding the sculpture park, emphasizing connections between university-based research and economic development of the region, developing GSU's first doctoral degree in physical therapy, and establishing quality as the byword for all GSU academic programs. And on a personal note, I thank Dr. Fagan for a smooth and seamless presidential transition. As I am officially invested as Governor State's fifth president, I am deeply honored to celebrate legacies of four distinguished predecessors. Inspired by the mythical Phoenix, we will imagine the future and reinvent a great people's university built where the prairie meets the city. Now let us imagine. Imagination differs from fantasy. To imagine means to envision experience in a new way, with an artist's eye. 
I imagine that during this administration, we will create a model 21st century university. We will build a public square defined by seven imperatives. The first imperative, GSU will expand access to underserved student populations. Our enrollment will grow. We will increase the pipeline of students now lost to university education. More first generation students will become lifelong learners. They will achieve baccalaureate degrees and go on to graduate study. We will cooperate with K through 12 institutions and community colleges, improving preparation for university study and creating an environment for student success. We commit to providing first-generation college students with all benefits of university education. Experiences that students from more privileged backgrounds take for granted. Now the Association of American Colleges and Universities, AACNU, represented here today by my good friend, President Carol Gary Schneider. Where's Carol? <laughs> They've done studies that have highlighted disturbing inequities. Did you know that first-generation college students take fewer courses in the humanities, social sciences, mathematics, and even computer science? Students from college-educated families take all those courses, but first-generation college students often believe that they must major in something that sounds like a job. Students from college-educated families prepare for careers and understand the value of a strong liberal arts education. <laughs> GSU will be a social justice university by providing opportunity for the highest level of university achievement to students underrepresented and underserved in higher education. The second imperative, GSU will be a student-centered university. As we make future plans, we will always ask, how will decisions affect students? Our instructional designs fulfilling 21st century requirements? Do our calendar and class schedule address students' needs? Are we doing everything possible to immerse students in the life of the university? Are we offering research partnerships and participation in stimulating new experiences? We will put students first. GSU will not be an ivory tower or a university on a hill. GSU will be a public square, open and accessible. But those who study in the public square have responsibilities. For example, in the spirit of our ongoing voter registration campaign, we are committed to infusing civic engagement into instruction and co-curricular activities university-wide. Being student-centered means respecting the student's right to the highest quality education. Students will be challenged and guided to achieve, often beyond their initial expectations. We must ensure that their diplomas are respected as evidence of their transformational educational experiences. The third imperative, GSU will be a model organization that asks, why not? <laughs> and listens. You know, before I talk about why not, I, I want to just say that I was wearing my why not button when, when we visited the NBC studios and, and uh, Warner Saunders, and uh, we had a wonderful conversation about it. And we cannot let any more of this program go by without a great thank you for the pro bono service of our NBC News anchor here in Chicagoland, Warner Saunders. Would you join me in thanking him? <laughs> the 
the why not imperative. Some of us remember that Robert Kennedy ended every stump speech by saying, some men see things as they are and ask why. I dream of things as they never were and ask why not. One year after Robert Kennedy's death, Governor State University was founded, encompassing that why not spirit, constructive, forward-looking, problem-solving. That is our heritage. As you may know, since mid-September, we have been conducting a successful why not campaign. This project empowers everyone to question, to ask why not do certain things differently, more effectively. Asking why not is a core value of the academy. It helps us to sort out necessary processes from bureaucracy and to distinguish traditions from habits. In a brief time, the why not campaign has gathered hundreds of constructive suggestions for making GSU more transparent and more student-centered. We've already implemented some new ideas. We will continue to do so. The goal is transformative. We will be problem solvers, not gatekeepers. In the public square, we are empowered and accountable as we work for the public good. The fourth imperative, GSU will help unify the Chicago Southland as well as Kankakee and Will Counties. Did you know that GSU is the only public university in the south suburbs of Chicago and in all of Will and Kankakee counties. Many hope that this university will help unify the incredible diversity around us, Sox fans and Cubs fans and lots of other diversity. Without a sense of community, growth is merely sprawl. Development is exploitation. The Southland and Will and Kankakee counties can be a beautiful mosaic or a hodgepodge. Education is the key. Great communities need great universities to be engines for economic, educational, and cultural health. GSU will be that engine and unifying force in ways more evident and more tangible than ever before. The university will be a public square for the region. The fifth imperative, GSU will apply expertise in research, scholarship and creative activity to help solve real world problems. This priority transcends traditional definitions of applied research. The key is mutuality. The university listens to the community and works in partnership to define research issues. That research is then integrated into our teaching and community service missions. Our professional doctorates will be research-based and developed in partnership uh, with the professions. And that's really important. Our first doctorate in physical therapy does just that. Doctorates in occupational therapy and nursing practice will be approved soon. Please, Carrie Heitman, our chair of, uh, yes, we're counting on you for that. <laughs> We have in the works, yes, we, we can uh, certainly say to Carrie Heitman, we need those approved. We have in the works a multidisciplinary, multi-college doctorate in leadership, serving a variety of professions, including K through 12 administrators. And we're excited about that. And that was one of the seminars this week to listen to our, our community on the development of this doctorate. Research, teaching, and community service will be integrated in the public square. The sixth imperative, GSU will be committed to a seamless educational experience, preschool to graduate school. We call that P through 20, and uh, the governor has a P through 20 commission. Here, we will put special emphasis on partnerships between GSU and community colleges. Education, yes. Education is a web, 
of complex interconnections. K through 12 institutions prepare students for higher education. Universities prepare teachers for K through 12 institutions. Everyone in education serves the public good by working on ways to cooperate up, down, and across the curriculum. My first priority as GSU's president has been to meet with the presidents and provosts of our partner community colleges. My goal is to learn how GSU can improve the record of baccalaureate completion for students who begin their college careers at community colleges. Each community college, true to its unique location and mission, has excellent suggestions for working together. I envision a community college compact. GSU will continue to listen and learn from our community college colleagues. We intend to share facilities and faculty, to recruit jointly at high schools, and to coordinate advising. Our shared goal is to increase the number of community college transfers attaining a bachelor's degree and beyond. The seventh imperative, GSU will provide a debt-free baccalaureate education for local community college transfer students at the poverty level. We are working toward this goal now. We will reach it soon. Nationally, the vast majority of minority students begin college careers in community college. Of those nationally who start with the hope of completing a four-year degree, only 10% accomplish that goal within six years. 10%. If we extend the window indefinitely to 15 years or more, the percentage rises, but only to 15%. Furthermore, a study entitled Access Denied by the Advisory Committee on Student Financial Assistance reports another disturbing finding. 20% of the highest achieving students, the highest achieving students from families at the lowest income level do not attend college at all. Think about that. Consider the implications for our nation in terms of untapped talent and social justice. Fear of debt is a major obstacle to motivating poverty level first generation college students to complete college. When we say financial aid, many students hear loans, even though outright grants are available. Many do not complete that infam infamous FAFSA form that establishes eligi eligibility for all public scholarship grants. Instead, they take on additional jobs and take fewer courses. Often the extra pay decreases their eligibility for grants and taking fewer courses makes them less likely to finish their degrees ever. Talk about Catch-22. To address this problem this August, we initiated a special campaign. The intention is to supplement funds available to Illinois poverty level students from federal and state sources through an endowment, and we call this endowment the GSU Promise. I'm pleased to announce that my husband Mort and I have contributed $10,000 to this promise in honor of my predecessor, Stu Fagan. We aspired by today to raise the first $100,000 for the endowment and for the necessary infrastructure to sustain it. We're proud to announce first that the Chicago Community Trust 
has approved a grant of $25,000 to support this leadership initiative. And I want to especially thank Chicago Community Trust President and CEO Terry Mazzani. He's here as a delegate from his alma mater, the University of Arizona. And as an old ASU Sun Devil, I won't hold that against him. But please, let's thank Terry Mazzani. <laughs> Yes, there he is. And drum roll, please. In three short months, we have exceeded our $100,000 goal for the GSU Promise. We have much more to do and many more students to serve. You have an opportunity to participate. I believe we will have brochures available in the lobby. Uh, this uh, drive is going on for the endowment. We need to raise a million dollar endowment to really make this work. Let us imagine together these seven imperatives for GSU's public square. We cannot become what we cannot imagine. That's true of universities and people. We are transformed by imagination. Expand access to underserved students. Be student-centered. Be an institution that asks why not. Lead in unifying the region. Use research to solve real-world real problems. Create a seamless educational experience, P through 20. Provide a debt-free baccalaureate education for poverty-level students. That is our vision. But a vision without a strategy is a fantasy. GSU has embarked on an invigorating strategic planning process that will create a blueprint for strategic investment and transformational change, a process designed to translate this vision into reality. Now the work begins. We are engaged in the fulfillment of the American dream. Nathan Manilow surveyed the open prairie where the prairie god still held sway and imagined a public square civilizing the prairie through landscaping, art, and education. The prairie in America's heartland has symbolic resonance for the nation as a whole. Carl Sandburg, poet of the prairie, understood that the phoenix lives here and symbolizes America. He wrote, I see America not in the setting sun of a black night of despair ahead of us. I see America in the crimson light of a rising sun fresh from the burning crea creative hand of God. I see great days ahead great days possible to men and women of will and vision. I see great days ahead for GSU. We have the will, we have the vision, it will come true. Thank you for being here today to remember and imagine in the public square.